In the rich world of Hindu beliefs, there's a question that keeps hearts pounding and mind spinning. Who is the most powerful Hindu god? In the vast tapestry of Hinduism, one of the most captivating concept is that of the Trimurti, the divine trinity comprising Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. Across countless millennia, these celestial beings have been revered as the architects of existence itself. Legend whispers tales of Brahma, the master creator, whose mere thought breathes life into the cosmos, shaping mountains, oceans and galaxies. Vishnu, the vigilant guardian, commands power with thousand eyes surveying the universe and thousand arms cradling the stars, ensuring balance and order in every realm. And then there's Shiva, the mighty destroyer who harnesses the power of transformation. His mere glance can reduce mountains to rubble, oceans to mist. Yet from this destruction blooms new life, new worlds in an unending cycle of creation and annihilation. But amidst the splendor of the Trimurti, a timeless question persists. Who among these celestial beings is the most powerful? This question has stirred the hearts and minds of sages and seekers throughout the ages, inspiring many tales and philosophical debates. So today we will discover what the sacred Hindu texts say about this question. First, we will look at the Shiva Purana, then the Bhagavad Gita, and finally, we will think about what Shiva himself has said about it. According to the Shiva Purana, once Brahma had a question in his mind about his own origin. To find the answer to that question, he performed intense penance and realized that he was born from the lotus flower that emerged from the navel of Vishnu. Brahma knew that he was the creator of the universe, and in this ego, he confronted Vishnu, declaring that he is superior to Vishnu. This led to a dispute so intense that it led to the possibility of a fierce war. Shiva, who was observing all this from a distance, manifested as a fiery pillar, lingam, in front of the pair to calm the situation. This lingam had no beginning or end. Both Brahma and Vishnu agreed that whoever could find the end of this lingam would be considered superior. Brahma took the form of a swan and flew upwards while Vishnu took the form of a boar and went downwards. But despite their efforts for many years, neither could find the end. Exhausted, they returned to where they started from. After their return, Vishnu accepted his defeat, but Brahma, out of ego, lied that he had found the end of the lingam. Therefore, Vishnu acknowledged Brahma to be the Supreme One and the moment he touched Brahma's feet, a fierce looking person emerged from the lingam. It was Bhairava, one of the forms of Shiva. He was so angry at Brahma's lie that he cut off Brahma's fifth head which spoke the lie. Shiva cursed Brahma that he won't be worshipped in the world and Lord Vishnu received the blessing of being worshipped like Lord Shiva himself. Consequently, according to the Shiva Purana, Lord Shiva is regarded as the greatest among the Trinity. But following Shiva's curse upon Brahma and the blessing bestowed upon Vishnu, the Bhagavad Gita offers another perspective on the hierarchy within the Hindu Trinity. According to its teachings, once the seven sages were discussing among themselves about who among Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh is the greatest. In the course of their discussion, Maharishi Brigu, one of the seven sages, decided to conduct a test to determine the greatest among them. In the pursuit of this, Maharishi Brigu first went to Lord Brahma. Upon reaching Lord Brahma's palace, Maharishi Brigu neither praised nor saluted Brahma. Seeing this, Brahma became very angry, but considering Maharishi Brigu as his own son, he controlled his anger. Maharishi Brigu then went to Mount Kailash to meet Lord Shiva. Seeing Maharishi Brigu, Lord Shiva, with a smile, stood up to embrace him. But Maharishi Brigu wanted to test Shiva. He declined the hug and said that Shiva's indiscriminate blessings to sinners and wrongdoers had caused repeated troubles in the creation. This made Shiva so angry that he picked up his trident. Seeing Shiva's anger, Parvati calmed him down, and Brigu proceeded to Baikuntha, where Lord Narayana and Goddess Lakshmi were resting in the ocean of creation. Upon reaching there, 
Brigu kicked Lord Vishnu's chest without offering praise or salutations. Seeing this, Lord Vishnu, with a smile, stood up and bowed to Brigu, asking if his chest was too harsh. Brigu, realizing his mistake, shed tears, and after narrating his experiences to the sages, declared Lord Vishnu as the greatest. Similarly, in the Shiva Purana once, Lord Shiva contemplated that as he is the god of destruction, whether he had the power to destroy the creator and the preserver? As this thought crossed Lord Shiva's mind, Brahma and Vishnu both started smiling. Brahma said to Shiva, Use your powers on me so that I may witness. When Lord Shiva used his powers on Brahma, he started burning, turning into a heap of ashes. Witnessing this, Lord Shiva became concerned about who would create the universe now. Suddenly, a voice came from the ashes. It said, Mahadev, nothing happened to me. The creation of this night happened from my burning, and where the creation exists, there am I. Then Brahma reappeared from the ashes. Subsequently, Vishnu asked Shiva to use his powers on him. As Shiva exercised his power on Vishnu, even he ignited and turned into ashes. But, from the ashes, Vishnu reappeared. Witnessing this, Shiva contemplated that if he were to destroy himself, would Brahma and Vishnu also be destroyed? Because, how could something exist when there is no destroyer? As soon as Lord Shiva used his power on himself, he turned into a pile of ashes, and along with him, Lord Vishnu and Brahma also turned into ashes. Darkness spread all around, and then in this darkness, from the ashes, Brahma emerged first because he is the creator. Following him, Vishnu appeared, because where there is creation, there is preservation. Finally, Shiva manifested from the ashes because where there is creation and preservation, there is destruction. This incident signifies that in the Divine Trinity, Lord Shiva, Vishnu and Brahma are equal, and comparing them is futile. So who is the most superior among the Trinity? Some argue that without Vishnu, the universe would fall into complete disarray. Therefore, he is the most powerful, as the world that we know relies on his authority. But Others claim that if Shiva is capable of destroying universal creation, then his powers ultimately override any other. The ongoing debate has many reasons, the strongest being that interpretations of Hindu texts differ depending on time and place. For example, one argument of Shaivism is that Shiva existed before Brahma or Vishnu, making him undoubtedly more important. But according to one fascinating remark in Vishnu Puran and Bhagavat Puran, the Trinity has always existed as an energy even prior to its true form. Additionally, in Hinduism, time is cyclical, not linear. So the idea of who came first could be considered obsolete, as deities keep manifesting time and time again. According to the poetic verses of the Vedas, we are living in a universe that is part of a multiverse. And Lord Vishnu is the personification of this multiverse. Countless universe burst into existence with every breath of Lord Vishnu. Conversely, when Vishnu breathes in, all these universes are drawn back into him. So does it mean nothing exists without Lord Vishnu? What do you think? If you want to know more about the origin of the universe according to Hinduism, please watch my video. Link is in the description below. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed the content, please show your support by liking, sharing and subscribing. Your engagement is highly appreciated.